This is a video on how to rebuild a Prius hybrid battery. Now with this cover off, you're going to notice in this video I numbered these from 1 to 28. As of looking at the car from the back, left to right. Well, it turns out after lots of research on this, it's not numbered that way. And I promise, I've looked into this, it's actually numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's numbered right to left. I know it sounds crazy, but I kept having a dead cell right here at what I thought was um, block 5. So I replaced these two cells and it still was showing really low voltage here at block 5 and I thought this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well it's not. I got on the tester. Let me show you up here real quick. I have this Prius software installed on here and it numbers the blocks and shows you the real-time voltage of each block and what I noticed was that weak set of cells was in what I thought to be down here block 5. It was like showing 12 to 13 volts and the rest were around 16. So I thought okay I'll just pull the battery out and replace them. So let me go back here and show you. I came across this and you'll see I had normally throughout this video numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And I had these were very weak, down in the 12 volt range. So I pulled the battery back out, I replaced these, marked them as in with new, and I go back to my tester and I look, and the voltage on block five was still showing like down in the 12 volt range. And I was like, what in the world? I tested these. So I took my cheap little DVOM and I plugged into here and I tested, and it was showing 16 volts. And I thought, what in the world so I went back here and I noticed you know 16 16 16 16 except block 5 was down in the 12 volt range and I was like racking my brain because I thought these are numbered left to right so I started testing every one of these and I come back across here and this this set right here this block tested across these two leads because this is just a jumper on this end tested across these two leads was showing me like 12 volts and that just told me right off the bat, wow, this is numbered this way. One, two, three, four, five. So this was five. So I discharged and recharged these cells and got the voltages back up into this 15, 16 volt range. So just to let you know, these cells are actually numbered backwards. It's from right to left. For example, it's showing me block 10. Right there, block 10. It's 14.8 volts. All right, I come over here where it says new. This should be block 5. It's not 14 point... This meter is a piece of junk, but it's like 14.8. So, it's the only one low on this chart right now down in the 14 range and that's saying it's block 10. The only way that could be block 10 is if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, da, 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 all the way back to block 10. So these things are actually numbered from right to left. Don't get that, let that get you confused because it really racked my brain. Batteries out. Have it standing upright and pulled the, the vent hose off and then it'll allow you to stand it upright and you'll have all these little bitty eight millimeter screws that hold these cells onto the bottom. Every other cell has one. You'll take that out on both sides of it and then you can set the battery back down. There's 28 cells here and 14 blocks worth. And I'm showing some weak cells, somewhere around, I think it was like seven, I don't know, seven and nine or something, somewhere around the center of this. So we're gonna disassemble this thing and change 
those bad cells out with some that I got on eBay that are holding 7.8 volts a piece. Initially pulling these caps off, I'm noticing quite a bit of corrosion on some of these terminals. So when I disassemble this, I'll definitely be cleaning that up real well before this goes back together. Okay, I've numbered these cells 1 through 28, and I checked every one of the cells, checked the blocks as well, and you can see the block voltage is kind of low here in the middle. We've got a block with 12 volts, uh, another one with 13, here's a 12, so it's kind of in the middle. And then when I separated the jumpers and took off all the control boards, measuring each cell, I have around 7 volts. You can see here in the middle, 13, 14 are pretty low. Uh, let's see, here's a low one, 25. What I'm going to do is put a trickle charge on these low cells and see if I can boost them back up and see if they'll hold after a day and see, if, see which ones kind of come back and we will replace the ones that do not hold. If you notice number block number seven here, these two cells are in the six volt range, 13 and 14. So on cells 13 and 14, I placed a jumper on the back side of those cells and power and ground, putting in about a four amp charge going to run three cycles, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, and we'll see what it looks like after it sets for a day. When you take that plate off the end there, you've got some 12 millimeter bolts that hold these catcher bars in. And I've seen a lot of people sliding these things out. It's so much easier just to take this side loose. I mean, you can squeeze a ratchet in there. You can move this out of the way, squeeze a ratchet in there, and just take these out. And with these bars out of here, these will just come in and out. You can rearrange them however you want. A whole lot easier. I charged all these cells up and then discharged them just using a DC motor here. I would discharge them down. Pretty much just, you know, hook this up to one hook it up to another, clamp it on, and that would pull about, oh, one and a half amps or so. So I would charge them all up, discharge them all, and then I noticed some of the weaker ones would discharge real fast. A lot of the center ones, so like 13, 14 here was a little bit weak. I would put an X and um, cell number 18. And then we had another one out here in, on the end. It was, uh, it was number 26. So I had a few questionable ones. This one I put a question mark on. This one discharged really fast. This one was just straight up no good. I mean, it was like very, very weak. And this one was kind of iffy. So I'm going to trickle charge some of these weak ones up and see which ones hold. And then I might cycle them into the end of this block and put all the good ones in the middle. Kind of like, uh, imagine a light bulb burns the hottest in the center. So these actually here were holding pretty darn good voltage. Same with this end. You have weaker ones towards the middle, like an element of a light bulb will actually burn brightest in the middle and then to the outside edge. Same thing happens with here. This is all running in a series. So the ones on the inside actually burn the hottest. So what I'm gonna do is take these ones that are real good and strong from the outside, move them to the inside, and some of the weaker ones move them to the outside. That makes sense. When you slide these out, you're gonna notice there's a temperature clip on the bottom of, or some kind of sensor, I think it's a temperature reading. And it's on the bottom of, so like this first cell, and then I had like another one, I think around like 14 or 15. And then you'll have like a third one down there at the very end. And then some clips that just kind of hold that on the bottom. So just disconnect those, leave them laying. Then you can start rearranging these cells. I put the outside ones close to the center 
and then some of the center ones to the outside. Super crucial step is make sure you start with negative here in this corner by the brain, the ECU. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Make sure that you line that up. And as you can see, I've got the uh, center cells towards the outside and then some of the outside cells closer to the inside. New cells, those are outside cells. Here's another new cell. And then it works back further towards what was in the center. I got all these nuts back on, plastic caps put back in place, got the ventilation hoses reattached. And what I did before I put all this back together was I checked polarity from each side of each cell. And they were all different ranges throughout here. And what I did is some of them were low, some were high because the battery had been setting. And what I would recommend is I just charged them all up to about 8 volts a piece. Some would take a little longer, some a little less, using two different chargers. For example, I've got a regular IMAX B6 charger, and then the name brand, Sky RC IMAX B6 charger. They're pretty much the same. I've messed with these things enough to find out this has just got a few more options in it. Uh, nothing that's really of any real concern. Um, you can top off the charge on this one as opposed to some of the other, the cheaper ones you can't. Um, yeah, there's uh, more discharge options and then a repeak. That just, uh, it'll do it twice. It'll, it'll top it off twice and it'll wait a little bit. Um, this, it doesn't have quite all those options. It's about half the price. But like for example, let's say I wanted to just top this this battery off. What I would do is I would go in here. I just what I did is I put it on one amp. You could do a discharge of one amp down to six volts. You don't want to go lower than a volt per cell. I mean you could go a little bit, but I, I just put it at six volts because there's six cells inside of each one of these cell blocks, if that makes sense. Like let's for example, let's say I want to just go ahead and start this. It's at like 7.9 volts, and what it's doing is it's discharging that one cell right now. It's discharging it at 0.7 amps, up to an amp discharge. I'll go ahead and cancel this. But like for the most time, like when I came back out here and some were just slightly lower than the others, I would hook them up to this trickle charger, and then I would just start the process like that's 7.98 volts and it brings it up to about 8, 8.1. I come back out here five minutes later, be like, you know, 8.2, 8.3 volts or something. And I would kick it off and let it set. So that's what I did on all these. I just, I just discharged them all down to around 6 volts. And I charged them back up to around 8 volts and did that four cycles for each one. And they all held pretty good. 7.98 and as I went down through here it's about the same on every single one. Okay this is a good way to really blow your face off if you're not paying attention so really be careful you want to wear gloves when you're doing this but you'll take these off and this is the hot side of this battery. Now it's not right now because the battery is actually broken in half. This is just pretty much like a jumper right in the center of this battery and all it does is it splits the battery in half so you can work with it safely. So when I engage this and I push this down it brings the battery back together. It completes the circuit at the halfway point junction which is kinda like right about here almost halfway. So when I engage this, well let me just show you. So I'm in voltage DC and I need to move the decimal because I'm not in like you know the tens range anymore. I need to go to the hundreds range. So now I'm in like the you know 100, 200 range. So this is a real good way to blow up um, your meter if you don't know what you're doing. I actually tried this initially in the car and I had a cheap meter and I just completely blew the thing apart. It was pretty awesome. You know, smoke and big old bright flash of light. It's kind of scary. So look, this is showing 222 volts DC. 
which is pretty amazing. 222 volts. Like if I were to just touch that, kapow! Probably dead. Or at least my heart would stop for a few seconds. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and you'll notice with it out, the junction shows no, no voltage. Hold on. Oh, that's weird. It shows 17 volts. Uh, it's probably because it's reading like, you know, two and a half cells or something. I don't know. But anyways, when you put this back in, that's when you really receive the full voltage. And when I pulled this battery out of the car, it was actually showing like 190 volts or something. So now we're up to 222 volts with a whole lot more solid amperage. So we'll put this back together and see how it does. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work, but I've got this battery all back in. Uh, you can see my block voltages here are pretty good and solid around 15 volts. It's after it's set for a few days. So I'll go ahead and uh, light the car up and we'll take it for a drive. You can see right now it's kind of going low because the engine hasn't started yet. And you just have to love that backup beep that you can hear from the inside of the car. Just uh, doesn't make any sense. So now the engine kicked on. You can watch these voltages. So see I have this uh, setting in the car while I'm driving. And this is real time. After driving the car for just a few minutes, you'll notice this battery charges back up. Pretty solid. You'll notice these voltages all stay steady within the 16 to 17 volt range. That's what you want. No check engine lights, no red triangle of death. Thing looks like it's in the working mode now. So I've been driving this car for about two weeks now and the battery stays oh, I'd say in about the 60, 70, 80 percent range all the time. No red triangle of death, no check engine lights. Uh, as you can see here voltages are staying very high. So as a recap after two weeks of driving this thing all my voltages are staying pretty solid with the car off at about a 16.8, 16.9 voltage rating. And that's what you want. You want them to all be very even. What I found throughout this process is if one of these blocks drop below a volt and a half of all the rest, that's when it throws your red triangle of death, throws your check engine lights. So if any of these are within one and a half volts lower than the rest of them, that's what it says hey we've got too much of a variance here and I'm gonna throw a check engine light I'm gonna shut this thing down and that's when your car goes into limp mode so you need all these voltages to be very close to one another and just driving the car it'll actually do that it'll 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 even itself out on its own so anyways this looks like it's a good battery I'm gonna go ahead and button this thing up after two weeks of driving it got 65 kilowatts of power and roughly 17 volts on each block so, Thanks for watching guys and gals.